Amen. Good morning to everyone. I pray that all is well with everyone. Come on, stand to your feet. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. But when we come into the house of the Lord, guess what we find? We find out that the Lord is there. And wherever the Lord is, there is peace. There's quietness. We can, we can gather strength. We can come before him with boldness because we come to do what? We come to praise him this morning. Forget about what's going on in your life. I'm not saying totally forget it, but what we need to do is give it to him. Because he's big enough, he's bad enough, he can take care of it. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. God is something that we find ourselves before your very presence. Even before we made it to these grounds, you was with us when we opened up our eyes this morning and, and rolled out of bed. You were with us. And for that, we say thank you for watching over us as we slept in the image of death, not knowing what was going on around us. You protected us. 
And for that, we thank you. We're going to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to do our due diligence to take that word and hide it in our hearts and do our very best not to lean unto our own understanding. So we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning, Mount Pisgah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. If you will, greet your neighbor on your left and your right. Just say good morning. Hello. Wave across the, oh, across the way. Now that was great. Now give the Lord a wave offering because he's done an outstanding job. God has done a marvelous job watching over us last night and keeping us on this morning. Amen. He brought us down to the house safe and sound. Everybody know their name, who they belong to. It's a good day to be in your right mind. We're just trying to work out some technical difficulties, but in the midst of that, God is still good. That means he's in it. Amen. This is the day. This is the day.
That's why I praise you and I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love
gracious and loving God. You said we can come boldly unto the throne of grace to find mercy and grace in time of need. God, I don't know what the need is in everybody else's life, but I know the need that I need. And that's why I come before you pleading with you and thanking you in, in the same breath for just loving me in spite of myself. For giving me another chance, for giving us another chance to, 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 to live out a day and, and to do our best to get it right in the name of Jesus. So we come giving all our cares to you because that, that load is heavy. It causes worry, it causes headaches, it causes stress, it causes us to fall out with our brothers and sisters. It causes us to do, to do things that we know we shouldn't want to do. So that's why we come before you, because you love us. And we're going to accept that through faith. For now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. For the just shall live by faith. And it's in the sweet and precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen, and thank God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Rock is growing its online ministries with the addition of an online media evangelism summit group. We're recruiting at least nine members to be a part of this outreach team. Team members will be monitoring Sunday and Wednesday services online on Facebook and YouTube to provide real-time response to prayer requests, salvation requests, and new member interests. If you're interested in joining this new ministry, please reach out to the church office with your contact information for a follow-up interview. Caleb, upon the profession of your faith, we come now before this body of witnesses, baptizing you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Hi, my name is Kaylee Davidson, and... Um, I want to be baptized today because I just wanted to, what's that word? <laughs> I just want to wash away the sins off of um, me and the past Amen. Um, bad things I, I ever did and remain and try my best to do good ones. Amen. 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 Very good. Good morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Hey, man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hey, man, thank you. I'm dropping stuff all over the place. All right. Father, we just give God all praise and, and glory. Just good to be in the house today. Uh, yeah, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. It's, it's good. <laughs> hey, man, it's good to see each and every one of you this morning as we travel and traverse through this land that God has blessed us to be a part of and and I just want to welcome each and every one of you in the house and those who are viewing us online we give you praise as well we thank God for your presence we thank God for you taking time to support to participate in this worship experience we don't take it for granted so we thank God that he has blessed us to be in the land of the dying on our way to the land of the living and so we honor God this day y'all I thank God for the remnant I thank God for those who recognize the fact that it's good to be close to the fire you know I appreciate you know those online but I really appreciate those in the house because we recognize that sometimes we don't get the warmth we need because we too far from the fire 
Amen. I, okay, I ain't going to start preaching now. Uh, 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 Rem Nikki, I already preached this morning and, and praise. Uh, so I just thank God for your presence and we just give God our glory, honor, and praise. And I know uh, it, that we have, God is always blessing us with those who are not a part of Mount Pisgah, but you are part of the body of Christ. And we want to recognize you. We want to uh, just give you a shout out. Are you those who are not members of Mount Pisgah? Are you in the house? We got any visitors today with us? Any visitors? If you are, just please stand for a moment. We ain't going to make you talk. We ain't going to do nothing to you, but, but we just want to recognize you. All right, everybody in the house is the, okay. Thank you, love. Thank you for being obedient to me. <laughs> Amen. Again, we just give God praise because we recognize the fact uh, that the Bible says, I said every Sunday, that we entertain angels uh, because we sometimes don't know who God blesses us to be in the presence of. And we thank you for coming. We thank you for sharing. We thank you. I know you gave me part of your testimony last Sunday. Uh, you have roots that are planted in Mount Pisgah. And so we just give God praise that you are here sharing with us today and we just give God glory for your presence. And, and so you already know how we do it. We don't mind praising God. We don't mind shouting. We don't mind clapping. We don't mind stomping our feet and running. Whatever the Lord moves you to do, just have your way. We're here to celebrate the name of Jesus Christ. And so thank you for coming and sharing with us this day. We give you all glory, praise, and honor. And those who are visiting with us online who have hasn't who have not been with us before we thank you for your presence and for coming connect with us you've got the information right there on your screen on and we ask that you would connect on us we got an online uh connect card please fill that out so that we can reach out to you so that we can touch you we recognize uh that many can't get here but we can get to you uh we're we're a church that believes in going out and outreach uh, and reaching out and so we want to touch you as well amen Listen, y'all, we had an awesome time last Sunday. Didn't, we, didn't, didn't God bless us that whole weekend, 158th church anniversary? And again, I just want to give kudos to all of those who, who were a part of it, who name did not get called, who did not stand, those who were in the background, those who are working behind the scenes. Thank you for all that you've done, especially those who lead us as well. We just thank God. That committee, did, did, they did it, y'all. They did it. They, they did it. I don't know what's going to happen on the 160th or the 159th, but the bar has been raised. And, and, and not only did they raise the bar, Matt Pisca, you raised the bar. We asked you to give 158 or 58 or $5.80 so that we could do all the stuff that we did last week. And I want to report to you that you gave over $9,600 Toward the oh, come on now, y'all, 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 boy, listen, oh my God, y'all, yeah, yeah, so that we could do what God allowed us to do in celebration of who he is, and so thank you for your obedience, thank you uh, for giving in such a powerful, powerful way, uh, we don't take, again, y'all, it's, it's, we don't take this for granted, this is, these are tough times, y'all know how, ga how high gas is, I mean, gas high, uh, but God is good. Right? I don't care how high gas is. God, God, God is better than any gas. Anything we got to spend on gas. And so we just thank God that, 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 that you were a part that you gave so that we could bless all of those who were a part of what happened on last week, especially those children, y'all, those children and youth, it was, it was just an awesome, awesome time. And it was an awesome outreach event. We had over 40, uh, 40 plus visitors. Amen. Because we want to make sure that Mount Pisgah, the way we celebrate uh, is by reaching out. And so we want to make sure that we focused on our community and we did just that. So again, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, I want to remind you, remind you, make sure y'all that we got our masks, our social distancing. Uh, you know, COVID ain't gone. Our speaker last week didn't get here uh, because, and he's vaccinated and got his boosters and all of that, just like me. Uh, but he still got, it. this stuff ain't playing the monkey pox all this man they got so much junk out here we just need to be careful y'all be careful you know continue to adhere to covid protocols and wearing your mask and distancing and all of those we want to make sure that we keep you safe okay we want you to be safe we want you to be safe um uh, side note y'all the elevator is out of service so don't don't get on it because you might get stuck and then Ain't no telling how long it's gonna take to get you out of there. So, uh, so don't get on the elevator. 
all right if you need any help and you got to go upstairs and need an elevator y'all see these wonderful pastors over here and these wonderful deacons they'll carry you they, they got strong backs strong that's right they, they'll carry you up so don't worry about it just 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 touch one of the deacons one of the one of the pastors one of these preachers in here we got brother Padres down front he clean but he he don't mind taking his coat off to carry if he need to okay uh, so so we good to go so we here for you we here uh, we we here just don't get on that because you're gonna be stuck uh, amen uh, amen <laughs> oh I'm sorry listen y'all uh, in it, it's just a blessing when not only for church anniversary did we show up but we have members here, and, and I ain't going to call their name because they told me not to. Uh, but they recognize the importance of giving back to God and, and, and making sure that others are blessed as a result of their giving. And they've given sacrificially, they've given above and beyond their means and ability. And I'm going to kind of touch on that today. But, uh, but I, I just want you to know that we've got folk here. Uh, who love the Lord enough uh, to trust God with what he has given them and the resources he's blessed them with. And so we've had a family who's given over $10,000 to help abate the debt that we have. We are in church conference a while ago and we got a little debt, y'all, that we need to get rid of. It ain't a lot, but we want to get rid of it because we don't want nothing to get in the way of what of ministry and what God is calling us to do and so brother say listen Pastor Hill uh, I'm going to put $10,000 to help go toward the debt uh, we're going to give $1,700 for, for the youth we're going to give $400 for the children L listen that kind of generosity because he recognized the fact that we're in this together and, and because we're in it together, we want God's program to move forward. And so I'm encouraged every time I stand up here to preach to know that God has disciples who are willing uh, to go on a ledge for him because Jesus goes on a ledge for us every day. Jesus did what we couldn't do for ourselves and whenever we come to give our tithes and offering we simply tell God how much we appreciate and what we think of Jesus and what he's done for us and y'all we, we just like everybody else I mean is going through it I mean churches and and, and homes and all of that uh, but the Bible says that our God owns everything uh, and so we want to be obedient to that. And I said all to say this, Deuteronomy 15 and 10 says this, You shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand to. God never allows us to beat him giving. God is never going to allow us to put ourselves out, and he ain't already put himself out. And so we serve that kind of God that believes in reciprocity. Uh, we don't we don't give to get we give because he's already gave okay y'all not getting this uh, listen y'all it's offering time it's offering time it's offering time it's offering time so let us do what God has laid on our heart to give back to him so that his kingdom will come and his will be done. And so y'all know what we're going to do. Y'all know what the ushers are coming. The ushers are coming. And, and, and we're going to do old school. Y'all, we old school. So we're going we gonna to march around real quick. And if you gave online, like I give online and text to give and all that, uh, uh, just come, come around with your phone. And just wave it. Just, just. This is your exercise. This is your getting loose time. Uh, you've been sitting down for a moment. So y'all, come on, stand. Come on, stand. The choir is gonna give us some blessing music, so that we can come around and give back to God what He's already given to us.
thank God for the sovereign Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver, and we pray that you would bless it so that it might be a blessing to all who need to receive your love, to receive your generosity. Thank you for our blessing this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As I get ready to take my seat so we can move higher in this worship experience, uh, I was wondering why Deacon Mike Anderson's dressed up today. He dressed up. He showed clean today. I just found out it's his birthday. That's that's why he's so clean. Look, I see you, brother. I see you. I see you, dog. All right, so we see it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, I, I'm sorry. All right, I was wondering what was going on. I, I was wondering, y'all, because it's hot outside, y'all. Uh, it, it, it's hot. Uh, Hey man, it's, it's, it's hot. He's suited and booted today. Thank God. Thank God. But happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dick. Happy birthday. And y'all, see, they missed this, and so I, I got to do it. I got to do it. Uh, Deacon Hyde, Deacon Hyde. Stand, Deacon Hyde. Deacon Hyde, your lovely wife in here today. Oh, she ain't with you. Y'all, Deacon Hyde, now we celebrating while he was gone uh, on having his. Uh, well, I don't know what you. I was finna say honeymoon, but he been married too long to have a honeymoon. Uh, 43 years of marital bliss. He was on a cruise. Now we separated there. And so congratulations, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We thank God. 43 years. Amen. I'm about, shoot, Mike just turned 43 today. And so we just thank. Amen. Amen. God bless. Hey, God bless. Listen, y'all, next Sunday's gonna be an exciting time, exciting time. Because we're going to on first Sunday's gonna be first fruits in July. And we're going to do something that we haven't done before in a while. We're going to try God. We're going to call it Try God Sunday. We're going to, for those who've never tithed, and I ain't talking, I ain't talking about tipping. I'm saying tithing. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about those who have never tried God. We want you to try God next Sunday. Next Sunday is going to be First Fruit Sunday. And so we're asking you to come, come ready, pray all week to get a word from the Lord because God, there's there's only a couple of places in scripture, and one of the things that God allows us to test him on, and God's one thing that God allows us to test him in is in our giving. Y'all ain't getting it, y'all ain't getting it. If God said you can test me there and see what I do. See if I want to open the window of heaven and pour out the blessing. Yeah, God says you can test me in your giving. And so I'm listen, I'm trying to set, God wants to set you free. And, and, and so next Sunday, next Sunday, it's going to be Freedom Sunday, but it's going to be Try God Sunday because somebody's going to get set free next Sunday because you're going to try God and you're going to come back and talk about how God did what God said, how God is faithful and how God was able to bless you because you trusted him. And so next Sunday is what? First Fruit Sunday. Try God Sunday. Tide Sunday. We're going to have an awesome time to next Sunday celebrating God. Hey Amen. Come on, choir, because then it got quiet on me. I think that's what. Then it got quiet, quiet, quiet. Yeah, yeah. Worship us. Y'all help me before I preach. Y'all, I need help. Y'all help me. Okay.
something about the name of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for we recognize the fact that Jesus, Jesus, that at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. At the mention of his name, demons tremble. At the mention of his name, souls are saved. At the mention of his name, we're set free. And so we thank you, God, that you saw fit to give us your son, Jesus, so that we can have the right to the tree of life. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior, our Redeemer. Thank you for being our advocate and our substitute. Thank you for dying on our behalf. Thank you for securing our salvation. Jesus. We need to hear from you today. And we ask that you would just so permeate this place that you would speak now Lord and Father I just ask that if this word that you deliver today is not for me that it would bless my neighbor so that nobody goes out of here empty this day Jesus preach now for your people to hear it's in your precious name we pray amen 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 Jesus Jesus I like that that's old school y'all that's old I like that yes oh how precious is the name of Jesus y'all turn with me to 2 Corinthians 8 stand if you can in honor of reading the word of God I'll be reading from the New King James Version uh, 2 Corinthians the 8th chapter we'll begin at verse 1 of chapter 8 2 Corinthians the 8th chapter 2 Corinthians the 8th chapter Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia and that in a great affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace in you as well. But as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in diligence, and in, and in love for us, see that you abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence Diligence of others for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for your sakes he became poor and that you through his poverty might become rich and in this I give advice it is your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago but now you also must complete uh, the doing of it that as there was readiness to desire, to desire it, so there must also be a completion of what you have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, not according to one, what one does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but by equality that now at this time of your abundance may supply their lack, that their abundance may also supply your lack, that there may be equality. As it is written, verse 15, he who gathered much had nothing left over, and who gathered little had no lack. I want to preach with your prayers from this subject, God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. You may be seated in this house. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Verse 3 says that through many dangerous toils and snares, I have already come. T'is grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. This hymn that was penned by John Newton back in, in the 1700s was penned by him because he had an experience with God that he could not get through and could not get past. He was a former slave ship owner, a, a captain of a slave ship, and he would transfer and trans uh, uh, and transport slaves from West Africa to England and to other most parts of the world. But then God met him in a violent storm and touched his soul, and not only did he convert him and stop him him from, from being the captain of a slave ship, he turned his life over to him and he became a preacher of the gospel and started fighting against the very slavery that he used to promote. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. What, what, what a God we serve that has grace that he imparts on us. And y'all know what grace is, that unmerited favor. Y'all know that grace is something that we can't work for, but, but what God gives to us in spite of us. God's amazing grace. And I don't know about you, but there ought to be somebody here that's able to shout today because you've been the beneficiary of God's amazing grace. Is there, is there anybody in the house today who don't mind testifying that if it had not been for the Lord's grace on my side, I wouldn't be here today. There, there's somebody here today that can praise God that you out of a relationship that you, that you got yourself into. But God's grace got you out of. There's somebody here today that can testify that you ain't always made the right decisions. That, that you've gone down the wrong path sometime. And you've gone in a direction that you know you shouldn't have gone. And then you started suffering the consequences of going that way. But then God's grace stepped in. God's grace is amazing. God's grace is amazing. And, and, and what God does, God does for us in spite of us. And, and, and I love this. I love this. There was a story that I read, y'all. I, I read about this man who would go uh, uh, every day. He would buy coffee. He would buy coffee. And he would go and buy coffee. And what he would do when he would go get his coffee each and every day, he would pay for the coffee for the person behind him in line. Right. Every day. He'd go through drive through Get his cup of coffee, and he would tell the cashier, this is extra for the driver that's behind me. And this is something he did without just, just, just giving, just giving that kind of heart, that kind of generosity that he just gave. And one day, y'all, he read, he read in, a, in, in, in his local newspaper, the editor had written this, this, this uh, editorial about a man who said that he had given up on life because he knew that the burdens that life brought were too heavy for him to bear. But one day he went to the coffee shop the day that he was going to take his life and, and, and he said that, uh, that somebody in the car in front of him paid for his coffee and that gave him the spirit, the renewed spirit that there are still good people in the world. Uh, oh, and instead of committing suicide like he planned, he was blessed because of what this man that he never knew had done for him. And I don't want us to take God's grace for granted because I appreciate that story because you don't know how God is going to use you to bless somebody else. How God's grace that's been imparted on you and that generosity that God gives. God, listen, you can't love God without giving. You, you, it's impossible to demonstrate God's love for us. God, God shows us and gave to us his only begotten son and when we practice what God has done for us daily you don't know what life you're impacting this man did not commit suicide because somebody showed him some love showed him some love and I don't know who I'm talking to today but there's somebody in here today you've been going through it and you're ready to give up on life you don't think there's any 
hope, and any reason for you to move forward. But I came to remind you today that God's grace is still amazing. And that God has just what you need. God has just what you need. And, and God is able to do it because he's an on-time God. And, and I want us to recognize in here today, y'all, because of who God is, God blesses us to be a blessing to somebody else. I don't know who's carrying the blessing that you need today, but I do know that God's gift of love is available to everyone. And, and, and God is so amazing. I told you, God demonstrates his love for us because, y'all, this is what we get to do when we give. And just like this man, it was a simple cup of coffee that saved somebody's life. It could be a simple word of encouragement and love lift that you give somebody else. It could be a hand out to somebody to give, to raise them up. You don't know. You can't take for granted what God puts on your heart to, be, to bless somebody else with. And because God's grace is so amazing to you, because God has shown up in your life in such a powerful way, you can't help but to give that grace to somebody else. Grace is not meant to be kept to yourself. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all don't get this in, man. Grace, grace, grace. When we demonstrate God's grace, God, God's grace, we demonstrate God's generosity. We demonstrate God's gift of love to others because we walk in God's grace. And so I think, I, I think, I thank this brother for taking the time to do what he did. And listen, I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for God's grace. So I owe God, all of us in here, not just me, we all owe God. If you stop and think about all the stuff that you done done, and we don't know nothing about and you still here and you ain't sleeping in your grave and you ain't strung out an addict an alcoholic when we used to, oh, okay y'all y'all ain't going God's grace is amazing God's grace is amazing and listen y'all know last what month was that shoot I think it was well, uh, in May in May y'all I was hospitalized um, because the doctors messed up my medication and the medication I got a new prescription and it contradicted some stuff I was taking and when I started taking it y'all it didn't feel right and I told the doctor this, this ain't this ain't, I don't feel right with this no the, and, and, and the doctor reassured me that what I was saying I was experiencing the medicine doesn't do that So I talked to my, you know, I talked to two different doctors, and what Isaac was experiencing is exactly what the medicine was doing, y'all. It's called side effects. Y'all see them commercials on TV where, where, when they be talking about them new drugs, and then the, the side effects and all the stuff is longer than the whole commercial. They talk about. I'm like, God, Lee, why would anybody take this? Cause it's gonna kill you, right? Uh, um, the side effects. Doc said, well, that's a side effect. It shouldn't impact you. It ain't gonna do nothing. But y'all, that stuff end up all almost kill me but God's amazing grace God stepped in to one of the nurses I work in the hospice chaplaincy and hospital chaplaincy right and one of the nurses y'all my blood pressure was 60 over 40 and I was still driving I had to lay down for a minute trying to get my thoughts trying to get I'm like you know what? and you know how we think you know uh, it, you know brothers I'm like if I could just get home and just lay down I'd be all right if I could just get home and lay down and it's 60 over 40 it couldn't I mean it, it was crazy so I got in the car trying to drive home uh, delirious can't have see and one of the nurses called me and say Pastor Hill you need to pull your stupid <laughs> and then she said, I'm married to a black man. I know how y'all are. And she said, I'm going to call the paramedics. And, that's what she, and that saved my life, y'all. Because of the grace. Because she took time to get in my business. She took time to get in my Kool-Aid. Because I was... Stupid, stuck on stupid, acting irrational. But she took time. And now that's what God's grace will do. God's grace will sometimes intrude and insurrect our lives because we ain't got sense enough. 
to make the right decisions. It gets me, y'all, time after time. Have y'all ever seen these stories on the news where drunk driver, drunk driver will, will, uh, gets pulled over and people start talking to him. I don't know why they drive when they drunk. I don't know why they just didn't call Uber. I don't know why they just didn't have somebody get a designated driver. Why did they get in the car thinking they can make it? And I'm like, am I missing something? They're drunk. You can't expect them to make rational and reasonable, reasonable decisions, right? And so you got to have somebody who's willing to get in your business to impart God's grace on you in spite of you. And many of us here have been stuck on stupid. We've done things that we shouldn't have done. But, that, but God, through his grace, has sent somebody to insurrect our lives and pull our coattails and say, listen, you're going the wrong way. Listen, young man, young woman, that's a bad decision. You, you need to quit hanging out with those folks. God's grace God's grace and so I thank God y'all in this text in this text let me rush on in, in this text Paul is writing to the Corinthians and Paul is writing to the Corinthians and, and he's telling them how good God is and because of God's grace because God has been so good to you you can't help but to share that grace and then so he talks about the Macedonian church the, who was in north um or who's in northern Greece was where Macedonia, Philippi, and Berea, and Thessalonica, they, they were in the northern part of Greece. The southern part was the church of Corinth. And he was sharing with them how the Macedonian Christians had given to the Jerusalem Christians who were in deep poverty and, and, and they didn't have much because of what uh, uh, Nero and, 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 the, and the kings were doing back then and, and, and how, they, how the church was under attack in Jerusalem and, 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 and the Roman emperor had blamed the Jews for, for all that had gone wrong in the kingdom because his policies were jacked and so he had to find an escape goat so he attacked the people of God to use them as an excuse uh, because he didn't know what he was doing, right? And, and so the church was under attack in Jerusalem. And so Paul was sending an offering back to them. And he talked about how the Macedonian Christians, they didn't have a whole lot. But they gave above and beyond their means so that the church in Jerusalem could have what they needed to survive. And so he's talking to a church at Corinth and he's showing them the illustration of what the church at Macedonia had done by giving to the church at Jerusalem. And the church at Corinth has started taking up an offering to give as well. And so Paul is encouraging them to complete that gift because God is able and because God is worth it. Because God's grace is upon you, you've got to share that grace with others. And so the word grace here in the, in, in the Greek, y'all, the word grace here in the Greek, it, uh, uh, it, 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 it has several different variations. But, but one of them all speaks to who God is. Not only is it God's unmerited favor, but grace speaks to God's love. Grace speaks to God's generosity. Grace speaks to, God, to, to God's giving to us in spite of us. And so when Paul uses grace over and over again, he's talking about giving to those who are without, those who God wants to bless us. God wants to use us to make a difference. And so he's encouraging them to give. And, and so he uses, like I said, an example of Master in Church. And the reason he uses that is because the reason they were able to give above and beyond their means, and this is the first point I want y'all to get, is because they made God their priority. They made God priority. Y'all see in the text, I think it's, 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 it's in verse 4 or 5 where he, says, uh, where he says, they first gave themselves to the Lord. Verse 5. They gave themselves to the Lord. And how many of you know that, that you must first connect with God vertically before you can connect with people horizontally? Your vertical relationship will have horizontal results. Your vertical connection will have horizontal consequences. Listen, you're able to do what God calls on you to do is because you made a priority of having your relationship with God be intact. 
Okay, y'all, y'all missing. Listen, that, that's why when you, whenever you're talking about giving and, and when you're talking about giving, it really speaks to what kind of relationship you have with the Lord. That's what this text is saying. Because God has been so amazing to us, what does it mean that when if we are disconnected from God, then we are not going to give the way God asks us to give. We're not going to do what God asks us to do. But when you connect it with God vertically and your relationship is intact, you can't help but to give. Because the word of God God says that God so loved the world that he gave. You can't be connected to God and don't give. That's the kind of God we serve. That's why his grace is so amazing. And in spite of it, and so because of that vertical connection, they first gave themselves to the Lord. They prioritized their relationship with God. And because they prioritized their relationship with God, it didn't matter what they had or what they didn't have. It's not an issue of their financial uh, stability. It wasn't an issue of their financial condition. It was an issue of their willingness to give. It was an issue of what they had in their heart okay I didn't say that right y'all, y'all missed it. it it wasn't their financial condition but their heart's disposition that mattered they, 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 they the Macedonians didn't have a lot but because they were connected to God they said we'll give what we got and then they gave more than what they had they gave everything they had to be a blessing to the kingdom of God because of their connection with God. And see, that's what happens. When you connect to God, you recognize that your blessings don't come from you. They come through you. You, you recognize that you are a vehicle, that you are an instrument that God will use to be a blessing to somebody else. And so God will strengthen you to do what you can't do on your own. And so this was so cool, y'all. Not only did they prioritize their relationship with God, but then number two, they, 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 they thank God for including them in the process. Because verse six talks about uh, finishing what you start. Finishing what you start. And I know y'all know people, y'all encountered folk who Talk a good game. They, 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 they have a sprinter's mentality, but not a marathoner's stamina. They, they give lip service, but life service don't follow their lip service. And Paul is encouraging them. Paul is encouraging them. When you prioritize God, God will include you in his process. And so he says, listen, you got to make up your mind to do what God has blessed you to do. Because it's God who will strengthen you to fulfill what you, what he's called you. And y'all, at, 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 uh, uh, um, uh, at church anniversary last week at Saturday at the at, at the night under the stars I saw members wearing these shirts that said all in had all in yeah all in and and I was looking you know I said all in what man what does that mean what is what is that in reference to that's you know all in and 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 then, so I didn't ask anybody I didn't ask anybody I just looked at the people who wore them. Because you can determine who's all in by what you do. I'm, 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 I ain't mad I'm just, I'm just telling you. You can determine. And I saw some folk who I know are connected to the Lord. Who are all in. But whatever Jesus says, they're going to do it. Because they're all in. They're, they, don't, they don't have their big toe in the, in the water. They, they jumped all in. Because they can't let a need that needs addressing go by without them addressing that need because they're all in. And so I thank God for those who are all in. But now I did see some all in folk. with a t-shirt on that I would question 
uh oh whether they what they were all into and so I I, I told you I didn't ask I didn't ask because I didn't want to get an answer I didn't want to get a, a response to what you were all into uh, uh, all in but but y'all we have to if, if, if we are going to be who Christ has called us to be and we're going to be recipients of God's amazing grace we got to be all in the text says in that same section verses 6 through 12 said that Jesus who was rich became poor for our behalf because he was all in Jesus who was God dressed himself in humanity because he was all in Jesus died and took my place and your place because he was all in. And God is so good, y'all. God is so good. God knows what you got. God, God, God knows what he's given you. And he's not asking you to give anything that he's not already given to you. But he asked Christ because of his grace and because of his love for us, Christ went all in for you and for me. And I love God because what God does, y'all, he includes us in his process. He doesn't have to do that. I told y'all a few weeks ago, the reason that God includes us in his process is because when he starts blessing, he wants to bless us. He's given us an opportunity to receive his goodness, his grace, and his generosity. And he wants us to be a part of that formula, part of that equation. But when we don't do what God has called us to do, by not participating in his process, we lose out. And we miss out. Are y'all hearing me today? God allows us. To be a part of what he's doing. That's why in Luke, Luke, Luke 21, when that widow, when that widow, she gave, she was all in. She gave her two mites. That's everything she had. And God ain't telling you to give everything you got. God just said, bring the tithe. And y'all, we got a problem with that. We got a problem with that. This woman gave everything she had. And God asked us to give because God wants to give to us. Y'all y'all know. Y'all know we sung the songs over and over, and either you believe them or you don't. Either you know for a fact because of your life and because of God's amazing grace that you can't be God given. And somebody knows that the more you give, the more God gives to you, and the more He blesses you. And, and instead of us lining up with that and believing that, somehow our vertical relationship with God has gotten severed. And because it's gotten severed, we start acting in our own like we drunk. And we done lost our mind. But I just came by to remind you, just like that nurse helped me out. And I'm standing here today because she got in my business. I'm going to get in your business. Because I don't want you to live a life of less than when God has called you to live a life of greater than. And it's your opportunity. It's your chance. This is your chance to break through what you got to go through. He puts it like this in 1 John 3. He says, whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? How can you say you love God and you see somebody in need and you don't bless them? You a liar. You lying. How can you see our community ransacked? How can you see our youth and our children going through this? Lord, this is so much information and things that they have access to. How can we not be an example and a model to help them to understand and interpret what they're feeling, what they're going? It's somebody's business you need to get in. I don't know if I'm talking to a family member. It might be a neighbor. It might be your grandchild. It might be your own child. But you don't have the freedom to fail. That's what the old folk used to do. They, we didn't have the freedom to fail. 
because they were going to throw us a life preserve and that's what it means to be a part of God's amazing grace is we got to get involved we got to make sure that we're doing what's necessary because that shows them the love of God you want folk to see God bless somebody you want folk to enter into a relationship with the Lord? Show God's generosity. Listen, y'all, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. What I was, I was, God's, man, God been so good to me. God's grace. I had to go get tires. Uh, actually, it is Saturday. But before I got the tires, God's grace is so amazing. I knew I needed tires. But I didn't want to go spend that money. You know, I said, I can get a little bit more out of these. You know, it ain't, you know, they weren't slick yet. They weren't slick. You know, I had a little tread. And, and I said, all right, you know, I can make it. I can make it. But then, y'all, me and my wife was driving. 75, we was up by Sherman. And it was storming. And as long as conditions were good and favorable, the tires were okay. But as soon as I ran into adverse conditions and stormy weather, those tires couldn't grip the ground, right? And I would hydroplane, y'all, and I was trying to make it home, trying to make it home, and, but, but, anyway, long story short, we end up hydroplaning, and you couldn't see, it was torrential rains, and the car started sliding across the lanes. I just started floating across the lane, and I was headed straight for this truck, and they were trying to maneuver to in the storm, and right before, I said, oh, it's it. You know, you can see, you know how you see in slow motion, feel like, oh, here it goes. And then you start, all that stuff flashed back. I knew I should have got tired. I knew I shouldn't have waited. I knew I should have got, you know, all these, you know. <laughs> Thank you. It, and, and I'm floating on across the lane, y'all. And right before I hit the car, the car pulled back. My car was yanked back across the other lane. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't, y'all ain't getting it. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Because I knew it had nothing to do with me. And God prevented me at worst from wrecking, maybe killing ourselves, killing people in the car next, all of that. Because I was too cheap to go put tires on the car. That's God's amazing grace. And and, and what God does, y'all, and this is my last point I'm done, what God does, God will allow us to participate and fulfill his promises when we walk on purpose. God fulfills his promise through our purpose. And what God did, what God did when he pulled me, pulled that car back across and prevented me from having that car wreck, I finally... Went and got the tires Saturday. No, Friday. Friday. I went Friday. I went Friday. I went Friday. I went. Got the tires. Y'all, tires are expensive. All right. Tires are high. Okay, I'm sorry. So these tires, I paid $900 for some tires, right? And I was sitting there and I was working on my laptop while they, because they didn't have the tires, they had to go get them. So I had to sit there and wait. And while I was sitting there and wait, I said, well, let me get some work done. So I was on my iPad and I was working. And there was a gentleman who came in who um, had a nail or a blowout in his tires. And he was trying to get them repaired. And so I wasn't, you know, eavesdropping, but it's a small, you know, lobby. You can't hear, but everything everybody's saying. Uh, and so I'm sitting there and the man said, I, well, I got my brother on the line. He's going to help me get the tires, the tires. And so he found out that he had warranty certificates on the tire that was torn up. And they said, well, listen, you don't have to buy a new tire. All you need is thirty eight dollars and fifty cents. And we'll give you a new tire. And he's like, awesome, awesome. And so he said, OK, uh, all right. But he had thirty eight dollars and fifty cents. 
and he was talking to his brother and his brother said he said man all i got i got ten dollars and you know i'm and he was talking i said man. and so i'm sitting there y'all i'm sitting there i said man let me ch- i just just been nine hundred dollars <laughs> and i felt like sister k Rowe doing her man i'm right <laughs> when she did that testimony that sunday so i got up i said man listen i just gave my card i said i got it don't worry about it he trying to figure out how he gonna pay for this and get this and his and the sales person looked at me like i was crazy he said what what do you do i said i'm I'm trying to be, you know, quiet and incognito. I didn't want the man to know. What I, you know, just, I, I got it. Just, you paying for his tires? I'm like, dude. I'm like, dude. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, just put him on the car. He going to pay for your tire. You don't have, I'm, and, it, and the guy said, he said, God bless you. Thank you so much. He said, I got my brother. He's, he's trying to figure out how to get me the, the rest of the money. I said, man, don't worry about it. God's been too good to me. And God put me here for this time because I serve a God who believes in reciprocity. And because God believes in reciprocity, I believe in reciprocity because I could have been dead on a couple of occasions. But God allowed me to be here just for you today so that I could pay for your tithes. So let me bless you with that. And the man was very thankful. I paid for, you know, sifting on his tithes and he got his tithes and he went out shouting and thanking God. This man just blessed me, y'all. This man blessed me. I said, I didn't do it. God did it. And I want you to know that God is going to use you to bless somebody else it wasn't but 38 dollars but that didn't matter the man didn't have it and so God blessed him and y'all that's what God calls on us to do God wants us to be a blessing he wants us to be a agent of his grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I found was blind but now I oh, if you really understood that God has freed you if you really understood that God has given you sight when you couldn't see you can't help but to reciprocate oh gosh y'all not getting this y'all not y'all not getting this y'all not getting this God, God, God is so good to us God is so good to us and I like verse 4 of amazing grace it says this the Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures and I don't know about you but I can celebrate and I can shout about the fact that God's grace is truly amazing and there ought to be one two or three people in here today who don't mind helping me close this sermon by celebrating God's amazing grace God does what he does in spite of us God moves in spite of us has God ever showed up in your life has God ever made a way out of no way has God ever been your brother has God ever been your father has God ever been your sister has God ever been a friend that sticks closer listen y'all God's grace is amazing and I don't deserve it I know I don't I should have been dead sleeping in my grave but because of God's amazing grace I'm here today listen I'm here I'm here I'm here I, 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 I didn't prolong too long it's time to go it's time to go but I don't want you to leave here I don't want you to leave here thinking that you merit anything that God has done for us God don't ask us to do nothing that he ain't already supplied us with and so we can leave here today victoriously we can leave here today knowing that everything is going to be all right. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you experience. It might be some health issues. It might be a bad diagnosis. It might be a bad relationship. It might be a problem with your children. It might be an issue on your job. But I want you to know, when you leave out of here today, that we serve a God who's amazing. We serve a God who's able. We serve a God who's available. We serve a God who cares. We serve a God who will get in your business and deliver you in spite of you. Is anybody in here? Is there anybody in here? Don't mind giving God a shout. Don't mind giving God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for getting in my business. Thank you for allowing your grace to take over. Thank you for moving on my behalf. Hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah.
I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your grace is truly amazing. Your grace is amazing. And we don't want to take you for granted. But there may be somebody in here today who has not seen or not submitted to your amazing grace. You've given us Jesus. He's paid our sin penalty. And you have pardoned our sins. But there's somebody in here today who's not walking under your pardoning. And I pray for them right now. I pray that you would touch them. I pray that you would permeate their being. That they're listening to the sounds of my voice that they would hear you Christ and the Holy Spirit speaking to them. Letting them know that though they don't have all the answers we know who does. Though that they may be going through it we know who can take them through it. A matter of fact not only take them through but carry them through if necessary. And so Father I pray for them this morning and as a church we're going to lift them up to you and we're going to ask that you would minister to them in such a way that they won't leave this service today whether viewing on YouTube, Facebook or wherever they are that they won't leave and turn and tune out before you have saved their soul and so church let's let's do this together just repeat after me father touch that person touch that soul that doesn't know you as one who has pardoned their sins allow them to confess you Christ to place their faith in you to believe that you're the son of God and that God raised you from the dead that they can receive salvation save them now God let your amazing grace have its way in their lives in Jesus name amen listen if you prayed that prayer with us if you prayed that prayer with us God has saved you right now if you're tuning in God has saved you right now Jesus is the son of God and God raised him from the dead if you believe that in your heart you just confessed it with your mouth. The Bible says that you're saved. We've got some prayer warriors, we've got some deacons, and we've got some pastors who are willing to meet you in the back. If you're in the house, you can meet us in the back. We'd be love to answer any questions you may have. If you're online, please contact us with the information online. There it is. Contact us. We'd be happy to share with you and to show you out of the word of God how you can have new life. You saw the video on the baptism. God has washed you from your sins and God has made you brand new and so we want to connect with you we want you to know that you don't have to live a life of less than but you can live a life of greater than we want to bless you because of God's amazing grace to us we want to reciprocate that, that's the kind of people we are here at the rock we're reciprocators and so we want to pass God's grace on to you and so please 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 contact us with the information online and, and may God continue to bless you May God continue to keep you. Come on, church, let's stand and get the benediction. Uh, amen, 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 amen. Thank y'all so much. Hey, uh, amazing God, amazing God. Be here next Sunday, y'all. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be off the chain. God is going to move. And God has given us a special word for next Sunday. Uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his light of the countenance of his love on each and every one of us. Go now in the power of God's amazing grace, knowing that he has the answer to everything that we need. Because of his grace, we can be generous. Because of his grace, we can show the gift of love. Because of his grace, we can give to those in need. We praise you, God. We magnify you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen and amen. We are dismissed.